All right, and we are live, our very first YouTube video. Welcome to the Van Group. Uh, today, I'm actually flying solo, so I'm David Ryan, my partner. That's Devan, David, Ryan. Uh, he's actually not available this weekend, but we wanted to quickly get this first video out um, because a lot of people just joined our group. They're starting to use our sheets, and we wanted to walk you through them. And it's going to be, you know, when we first started, we would just send our spreadsheets to people and then a loom recording. We always said, oh, one day we'll do YouTube. And it's funny now that we're actually transitioning to YouTube, I'm still using loom. Uh, to record my screen. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Uh, Ryan and I, we will figure it out. So right now, don't expect anything fancy just yet. You know, no intro music. We're not going to have that flashy subscribe here button, but feel free to uh, like it, all that thumbs up. We're going to stick to some basic stuff. We just want to walk you guys that have our sheets through real quick on how to use them. Uh, Ryan will join us for the future videos. He's actually away for the weekend curling. So just that's another side hustle. I don't know how many side hustles we have going on, right? So we got our main jobs. We do Amazon. We're selling our spreadsheets. Uh, I'm a dad, you know, Ryan. He's actually a professional athlete, which is pretty crazy. He played for the German national team, right? And in Canada as a youth, he was pretty successful too. Won a couple of championships. Uh, he has a Wikipedia page, guys. Go check it out. So Ryan won't be here for this one. I'll walk you guys through. Super excited to finally be on YouTube. Um, we'll share the link in our Facebook group as well. And let's start right away. We're going to start with the face, not Facebook, with the keyword planner, right? Um, so the keyword planner, super simple sheet. We just use it to make our master keyword list. I'll walk you guys through it. I'll do another video later on about our launch tracker. Okay, so go check that out right after. Okay, let's get started right away. So this is our keyword planner. Uh, super straightforward sheet. We only um, created this because we found it's a nice way for us to, you know, clean up Cerebro, Magnet, and get all of our keywords in one place that we can update the search volume because those change with time to time. And then we can divide our keywords up into either a launch phase or a different root keyword list, right? So I'll walk you guys through this. There's two different ways to import the data. Uh, they're both quite simple. One is using Cerebro, one is Magnet. You guys feel free to use whichever one you want. And then from that, we will actually copy these keywords lists into our launch tracker. Like I said, that's the next video. So go check it out. Okay, let's pretend that you know you guys already have your master keyword list. You know what uh, your product is and what the keywords are. For this demonstration, we're gonna pretend that we do have that kind of list, that our product is a cat tree. So we're selling this cat tower, right? For like indoor cats. We're gonna pretend that we um, wanted to differentiate ourselves. So we added a hammock and it's designed specifically for big cats, right? So this would be, let's say, a list of keywords that I've already thought of, whether using Helium 10 or brand analytics, but I have a list of keywords. So if I want to find out the search volume for these keywords, one nice way to do it is just to copy it, that list from Excel, right? And to actually run a magnet on it using Helium 10. So let's, let's go do that together. Anytime you copy a list from Excel like that, you actually, oh, I see uh, my face is coming through. Hi guys again. I'm gonna close this, we don't need to see me now. You'll still hear me. So um, you can't just paste that into here, right? We're gonna have to separate them by comma. So there's a nice free converter to, that converts columns to comma separated list. I'll share the link to the site as well, but go ahead and just paste your list into here. It'll automatically make a list separating all of them by commas and it'll automatically copy it to your clipboard. So it's a super easy uh, site to use. And now with that, we just go to magnet and we paste. Let's click get keywords. And what it's going to do is going to, you know, get the data from these keywords, find the search volume for us. Okay, now that it's finished, I'm gonna go ahead and export it. So on the top right, export, click Excel. That's going to download that information. And this is what the raw data looks like, right? So this is a magnet. What we're going to do is we're just going to highlight the whole sheet and we'll just copy it. And we're going to put that back into our um, keyword planner. Okay, now you can put it anywhere. You can put it here in the sheet one. You can put it in any sheet. So you can create a new worksheet. You can do any one. So we have the, the magnet in here now. Okay, let's go back to that keyword list that we had. I'm going to also select them. Now we're gonna start playing with it in our validation list. So anytime you 
work with uh, one of Devan sheets, Excel sheets, anything in blue, you guys feel free to edit. Anything that's not blue, there's formulas behind it. So try not to touch those. Most of the sheets are locked. Some of them aren't, um, but just stay on the blue cells. And when you paste, please only paste special values only. This ensures that any formatting and that cell stays true to the original file. Okay, so let's just paste value. So we'll have some list here. So as you can see right now, it's saying, hey, the search volume is missing and I can't find any search, uh, search volume, okay? And the keyword type is missing. So what this sheet allows us to do is it allows us here to type in the reference of the worksheet. So right now we pasted our magnet into sheet one. I'm gonna go ahead and call this um, today's date. So let's say 10th, July, 21. Yeah, I'll type 10 July 21. And what you can see is as soon as it matches the worksheet at the bottom, it's going to filter through that magnet and it's going to get the keywords and the search volume. Okay. Now, what we did was we classified them into three different categories. This is a bit of an aviation related theme, right? Um, since we're both aviation geeks. And uh, what this is, is we said an idle keyword is anything that has a monthly search volume of 300 or greater. A full throttle, right? So we're revving up the engines, going full throttle is 3,000 a month or greater. And afterburner, this is 30,000 a month or greater, right? So those are the big ones. And the reason why we chose those, is essentially 10 a day, 100 a day, and 1,000 searches a day, right? Okay, so that just gives us a very quick visual overview of the size, the search of the, that search volume. So here we have the type, here we have the keywords, and here we have the search volume. So, I mean, obviously you can just stick with your, your magnet, right? And just filter, filter through and look at these keywords. But why do we create the sheet? It's just for us to now classify them into different phases or keyword lists. So for example, if we said we're going to launch this product and, um, straight out of the gate, we want to do some PPC targeting. We want to only target heavily, highly specific keywords that are very relevant to our product. Now, remember for the demonstration, we said we're making a cat tree tower that has a hammock, right? So that, that was our main goal to differentiate using the hammock. So what we can easily do now is go into the filter on the keyword target and type in the word hammock. You can see there's two keywords that we found that have the word hammock. So now I might say, okay, this is going to be a phase one keyword. It'll automatically populate on top here, letting us know that we have two keywords that are in phase one, combined search volume of 3000, which is a 0.3% of the total search volume in my entire keyword list, which comprises of 52 total keywords and you know close to a million in search volume. Okay, so that is done. All right, what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna say, you know, what would phase two look like? Well, the catch tree with the hammock, we actually made a very modern design. So let's see if there's any keywords that have modern. As you can see here, there are three keywords that include the word modern. So we're gonna say this is gonna be phase two of our launch. Okay. Once again, that's 20,000 search volume in phase two comprised of three keywords that I can target. And then the last one, we specifically designed it for larger cats. So let's see if there's any keywords that have the word large in it. Okay, we got four here. We're going to say that's phase three. Um, we're going to think about another word for large. Let's say big. Okay, there's some for big cats. That'll also be in phase three. I'll go ahead and clear that filter. So the nice thing is now I have my launch phases and I can just say, okay, what does my phase one keyword list look like? And later in the next video, you're going to see, we're going to copy this keyword list and we're going to paste it into our launch tracker so we can actually document our launch, right? To make sure that, that we're starting to rank uh, for these keywords that we're targeting specifically with our PPC. Um, if you want, you can also define it uh, by different list names, right? So depending on the product, obviously, there might be certain root keywords like in this example. So I'll just go ahead and remove the filters here. We'll include all phases. We can say, show me all of the keywords that have the word tree in it. So all of these here have the word tree instead of tower. So we might want to put these in a list. I call a keyword list tree, right? So I might call it tree. So I would just go ahead, drag that down. Now on some Excel versions, this is very different. So on mine, I have to drag it down. And on Ryan's, you actually have to copy paste it down. Now the thing is, remember, there's a filter on here showing me only the tree. If I remove the filter, what we want to make sure is that it didn't accidentally 
give the ones without it the list tree, right? So that's a bit tricky. You just have to see what kind of version of Excel you have, either copy and paste values or just drag it down. Then I can do the same thing for tower. I can say, okay, you know, I'll do tower. And then I can say, okay, let's add these to a list called tower. Why do we have this tracking thing? So this, um, this sheet allows us to put in 500 keywords. When we launch, we don't track all of them necessarily. We'll just pick the important ones. And then this is just a nice reminder for us. We might put X saying, okay, these are the ones that we're tracking. These are the keywords I wanna know, maybe all the big ones as well. And then later on, what I can do is I can come here and say, show me which keywords am I tracking just to make sure, okay, these are the ones I'm tracking. Now, you don't have to use any of these, I mean, phase lists or tracking. It's obviously just a tool that, that we build sometimes. In some scenarios, we'll use tracking. Um, sometimes we'll use phases, we'll use list. The main purpose that we use this for is to keep all of our keywords in one place. We get a quick overview of what is the total search volume. We can define goals that we have quickly for launches. For like phase one, we might say these two keywords have to be at least in the top 30 organically before I move on, I can add some notes. So it's just free for you guys to use however you'd like. So that's the method to import this using magnet. Now let's take a look at another way to find keywords real quick. Another way that we sometimes like to find keywords is by going to brand analytics. Okay. So brand analytics, great tool from Amazon for brand registered, uh, brand or sellers. And um, so we would type in, let's say cat towers here, and we've got a list of these, we can export them or we can manually write them out. One super important note, some people don't know this is that brand analytics is um, not like plural sensitive, right? So here's cat towers. And if you look at the singular word cat tower, it actually shows you cat tower, completely different search frequency ranks, and also some different keywords or search terms, right? So I know in PPC, you don't have to target both of those uh, at the same time, because it'll take care of plurals and singulars. But for brand analytics, if you're trying to get those keywords, make sure that you include the singular as well. What we'll do is we'll check out, you know, a certain time period. So we'll set the weekly range, for example. But then we're also going to look at, let's say, Q4. So this is what it would look like, you know, last Q4. So we can get an idea of what is the search frequency rank and what keywords are also appearing during the Q4 time period. Now the search frequency rank is great because it'll tell us specifically what does that search term rank in Amazon? One being the most frequently searched search term, you know, and it goes all the way down sometimes, uh, you know, close to a million. And it doesn't tell us much though as a seller, like I, I can't really understand, okay, well, how many searches is that a month? But the nice thing is I know that Helium 10 gives me the search term. So what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to use brand analytics here. I type in cat tower. I'm going to find what's the number one clicked ASIN and I have his ASIN right here. I mean, he, if he's the number one clicked ASIN for the biggest search term of my product, chances are he's most likely indexed for most of the keywords that I'm going to be targeting as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to copy his ASIN and we are going to, oh, sorry about that. We are going to put it in. I just got to find it <laughs> one second. I got a different order here. There we go. Sorry about that. We are going to paste it here into a Cerebro. Okay. So we're going to take his ASIN. We're going to put it into the Cerebro on top here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to export it into an Excel as well. Okay. So now it's exported as an Excel and we're going to get all of his keywords that he's indexed for. And the nice thing is now is we can put our list in and get the search volume from him. Okay. So we'll go back into our Excel file. And we pasted the Cerebro into our Excel sheet right here. So this was the com competitor's uh, Cerebro. We have all of his keywords lists here. All right. Now, remember on top, I can change this to change the reference. I can type Cerebro now. And now it'll take the information from the bottom, right? The cool thing is this way now, if I see, oh, my competitor is actually indexed for something like cat towers on sale. And I didn't think of that keyword. I can go ahead and add it here, cat towers on sale, and it'll automatically find the search volume, right? And then I can decide if I want to add it to a launch phase or a different route list. And I, I can do that for all the keywords, right? So I can find it. Uh, let's see, because some of these may not be applicable to me, right? Some might just sneak in here. Kitty tree. Okay, that might be a good one. I can do, let's say, kitty tree. And then once again, boom, it finds it right away, the search volume. Okay, so this is just one way that we like to clean up our list. 
Now, there's one thing I wanted to point out. Why do we have this reference worksheet? Why do we have here a Cerebro Magnet? What we normally do is we plan these keywords when we do our, like if we decide to even launch a product, right? So when we do our product validation, we want to see how many, how much search volume there is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the last two. Now, the Cerebro, I actually pulled this about three weeks ago because we were doing a presentation about our, our worksheet. So the Cerebro I pulled three days ago and the Magnet we just literally pulled live now, right? So th three days later. Now the search volume on Amazon updates once a week, right? And Helium 10 will update their search volume as well once a week. And it just so happened that the Cerebro has last week's data and the Magnet has this week's data. And let's take a look at what happens, okay? So total 52 keywords, we're over a million. If I type a Magnet, Oh, sorry, that wasn't it. It was 10 July. Because that's where we put the magnet. It dropped down to 985. Okay, 985,000. So the search volume kind of dropped, right? And that's just, I mean, that's just uh, the, the what's happening with the product overall, right? So summertime, if this product is dropping in search volume, it might go up next week again. But the cool thing is by having these tabs is we can actually save them. And we normally save them with the date, let's say, and we would pull it right before we launch it. We would pull another Cerebro put the current date, and then we can see what happens. The color indicators on the left will also show us if maybe, you know, a keyword that we thought is an afterburner while we're planning the product, if it kind of like dropped in search volume, it might have switched with this one. That one could have become an, um, an afterburner, and this one goes down to a full throttle. And we could easily identify that here. So that's basically it. That's how we use it. I'll put Cerebro back. And I think you can see, oh, right here, look, we actually had two more afterburners. Look at that. The Cerebro that we pulled actually had two more afterburners in comparison to the Magnet that I pulled. So these two actually dropped below the 30,000 mark. So just very interesting tool, quick visual of what are my keywords doing. That's why we created this uh, up here to have the different tabs at the bottom. You can pull as many Cerebros as you'd like into there. Um, and it's a good way to clean up your keyword list. Then what we normally do is we save it here. We filter it into different phases, and then we copy and paste those into our launch tracker, which is our next YouTube video. So super excited. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just reach out to us in our Facebook group and you can ask us there. We'll answer those for you. I hope uh, you enjoyed our very first official YouTube video. Now I just have to figure out how to stop this. Here we go.